Hi, quick question. Is your inbox also kind of messy? And I don't mean email inbox, I mean, where do you actually write down your notes? For me, it is scattered all over the place. I'm using Notion, I'm using Apple Notes, and I'm setting myself tons of notes on Telegram as well. And it is actually getting pretty bad. So I thought I have to do something about it. So I sat down and I set a simple automation on Make. Today, I'm going to show you exactly step-by-step -step process of how I set up this Make automation for myself so that you can do something similar for yourself. All right, so let me show you what this automation does. I have a Telegram bot where I send all the links, all the resources, all the random notes that I get throughout the week. And the problem currently is that it's kind of messy. I get a lot of different information in one place. It's not structured and it's not really usable. So what I came up with instead is I'm still gonna use my Telegram bot as an inbox, but then I'm gonna set up a make automation that's automatically gonna put my links, notes, random thoughts into the correct Notion table. So it is nicely organized and I can actually work with this. Let me show you how it works. This is the Telegram bot. And let's say I found a link of a really cool uh, company. So I'm going to send it to my Telegram bot and wait until it thinks. And then it added it to the resources table, which is here. So if now we go to Notion, I have a lot of tables here. And if we scroll down, we can see that it now has put it here. Parse Labs is a Parse Labs website and this is the link. Okay, perfect. Now let's try something with voice. Let's say I got a new idea for a LinkedIn post and I'm on the fly, I'm on the go and uh, I only have my telephone with me and I don't want to type. So I'm going to record a voice message and I'm going to say, write a new LinkedIn post about digital humans. So I'm just going to send a voice note and it's going to get transcribed and put into LinkedIn ideas table, which is now here. Perfect. Now let's go back to make and I'm going to show you how you can set up a similar kind of automation for yourself. First, you need to create a blog on make.com, which is called Telegram bot watch updates. You're going to have to connect it to your Telegram bot, which you need to create in Botfather. So you go to Botfather, you say, I want to create a new bot and it will give you a token, which you would need to paste here in the watch updates. Once that is connected, then we have two paths. Why two paths? Because we are processing two types of content. There is a text content when I'm just typing a message and this part is responsible for that. And then uh, there is our situations when we are processing voice content when I am sending voice. And for that, we need to transcribe my voice first using OpenAI. And then we do the exactly same thing as we do with text once it's already transcribed. So let's go with a simpler path. I'm going to show you how to set up that first, and then we're going to go to voice transcription. All right. So when we are setting up a uh, text, we are first setting up some uh, block that is called tools, where we're going to store our telegram message. So what happens in make is that I send a message and then it is being parsed like this. So we need to go to message and then click text and store it as a user text variable, which we later are going to be using. Afterwards, we need to send this text to OpenAI to classify it into different categories so that we can store all of this in our Notion table. For that, you need to create uh, a component that's called create a completion prompt GPT component. So we click here. You need to set up the connection. So you need to go to OpenAI and get your IP key and paste it here. And once you set up your OpenAI connection, then you need to select a model. I selected GPT-40 mini because it is rather smart, but still small and cheap. And here in the messages, you first need to add one message with the role developer system, which is where you put your prompt. 
right? And in the prompt, you can paste something like, you are a smart AI assistant, your goal is to read the user message and return a valid JSON in the following format. So the format that I came up with was a category. So one of my notion, a table names like LinkedIn, YouTube resources, etc. Then the title, which is a description of what my note is about, original text so that nothing is forgotten and extracted link. So I say again that you can predict one of the following categories and I list all my tables. I also title you create a short title that describes my note as the original text. You paste the original text and actually we don't have tags now. So that was for the future. We remove the tags and as link, you just extract the link. If you can't predict to return uh, an empty JSON. And I also pasted examples. And when you are doing prompt engineering, that's really helpful. So I explained what the user said and I give the output. So if the user said need to buy flowers, so if the user said need to buy flowers, then we predict category tasks, title by flowers, original text is the same as this. And there was no link. And I added a bunch of other uh, examples. And I recommend that you actually add real examples from how you usually talk to your Telegram when you send notes. So just analyze your Telegram chat, chat history or the type of notes that you put in uh, another kind of uh, note taking app and use that as an example and then categorize it into correct categories. Okay, that's it. Uh, after we added the first message, we need to add the second message by clicking add message. And this needs to be your user message. And you put the user text here, which is basically exactly what you send on Telegram. Then an important thing here, you need to set JSON object as a response format. So not text, but JSON object. And you need to click parse JSON response as yes and the rest you keep as it is. Afterwards, you need to create a new component called parse JSON. And here you uh, need to click add and then click generate and paste your JSON format from here. So we can actually go back here, open message one, copy this thing. Then we go back to parse JSON object and let's say we add a new one. We click generate content type JSON sample data, this one. And you can see that it extracted the correct JSON. So we have now category, title, original text and link. That's exactly how our JSON format looked like. So you click save and I'm, I'm not going to save because I already have one. And then this is important. You need to pass to this JSON what the chat GPT returned. So for that, you click here and then you go to choices, message, content. You can see that this is how the prediction looks like. It's a JSON. So after this step happens, your JSON will be stored in separate variables, which is exactly what we want. Because afterwards we create a router component which decides to which table we're going to paste our content. So for each link, we write down the label and then we go here and we select the category from the parsed JSON and set it to the same categories that our OpenAI is predicting. So for me, one of them is called YouTube. And we do like that for each of the tables that we have. So for me, it's YouTube, resources, LinkedIn, books, tasks, etc. Now, Notion. Okay, now how to connect to Notion. That wasn't so super trivial, so I'm going to walk you through this step by step. We create an a block which is called create a database item and we connect it to our Notion table. The way it works is you need to go back to Notion and open your table in full view and then click on three dots here click connections and here important do not click make instead click manage connections which will lead you to this page you need to click develop or manage integrations and create a new integration with a name that tells you something so for me let's call it um, youtube 
demo connection. Then associated workspace, I have two because I have two Notion accounts, you probably have one. And type internal, you can also upload a logo so you know how your connection looks like. Then you click save, configure integration settings, and you're gonna see this screen. And here you need to click show and copy this secret key and paste it back here. Then the connection will be done. Now you need to go back to your Notion tables um, here. And for each Notion table, you would need to click here, connections, and click connect. So YouTube demo connection is the connection that we now have just created. And you will go to each of those tables, click on open as a full view, click on three dots, connections, and the connection that we just created. This is very important because once you are able to do that, then here you write nothing, you click search, here you also write nothing, you click OK, and you're going to see all the tables that we have. For me, it was the YouTube table, I believe. So you get the table and you get all the columns. So for me, for the YouTube table, if we go here, you see that I have two columns, column name, column original text. You can actually be creative here and you can add any columns that you think are useful. For example, tags or the date when this was created. I think, um, actually, I think in my next version, I need to add date. Uh, that would be helpful. So. You can see for my YouTube table, I have two columns created. One is called name, another one is called original text. You can create as many columns as you like and whatever you think is helpful for your use case. And then once synced, you will see those columns here. So name, name and original text from there. So we put our parsed JSON into the correct column. So we put the title and the original text and then we click save and the Notion connection is done. And afterwards, we need to click on, um, well, actually, you can decide how to set that up, but I like that my Telegram bot tells me when everything went successfully. So after it adds something to the Notion table, it sends me a message to the correct chat ID. So you can see message chat ID uh, here. Message chat ID. So the same chat in which we are talking and the text is added to YouTube table and you can decide whatever notification you want to add. So there was all for the uh, parsing text. For voice, actually, it's almost the same. So this part is exactly the same. So you can just copy it by clicking Shift on MacBook and then doing like this and then just Control V but uh, let's remove it for now. And then you connect it here. The only difference is in processing voice. And I'm going to explain to you now how to process voice and transcribe it. So if we go back to the beginning, you can see that here we have another router with two lines. One line is checking that the message.voice.file ID that the telegram is sending exists, which is basically checking if uh, we have any voice file attachment. And if we do, then we go this route and we process the file. And uh, here there is a fallback, which says set a route as fallback to yes, which gets triggered in any case when it's not a voice file. So when the user sends text, for example. So what we do here, we create a block called download a file which is already connected to your Telegram. And here you specify file ID as message.voice.file ID, which is uh, the ID of your voice message. Afterwards, we create a new block called create a transcription with Whisper uh, by OpenAI. Here we select as file this Telegram bot download file from here, as model Whisper1 and a response format text. And that's it. This already returns a transcripted text. You just now need to correctly link it here in the tools. So you are storing the text that is returned by OpenAI as a user text. And the rest stays the same. So again, we are predicting categories, we are parsing them as a JSON, and we are storing them in the correct, correct Notion table. That was it. That was the basic setup of how you can clean up your 
Telegram inbox and st sort out your notes into the correct Notion table. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to try this automation. And I'm also really curious how you would set it up. What kind of tables are you going to have? What kind of columns are you going to have? Are you going to add tags and things like that? I'm still playing around with this automation. So every time that I am noticing myself sending myself messages on Telegram, I am changing my behavior and I'm sending those messages to the correct bots. And every time I notice that it adds something to the other table because I haven't created the correct table for this specific type of notes yet. And if I notice that, yes, I do need a new table because it's useful and I send myself a lot of content under this category. I go back to my make automation, I create a new notion table, I link it. And then as I am using it more, my automation is evolving. So I say that this is a continuous process and you learn what works best for you once you set up the minimal version and you keep trying. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a like, follow me for more content on AI automation, chatbot development, and other AI related things. And I hope to see you in the next video and have a nice day.